Hello and welcome to Wilmington University's Applied Technology and Education Master's Degree Program. We're very excited to have you with us and as you go through your core program courses, the EDT series of five courses, there is a portfolio that you are going to keep with some major assignments. These major assignments are hitting all of the standards um, that leads to the completion of the program. We have created a prototype for you to follow um, so that all the portfolios are going to be consistent. Um, and so this example PB works page is your template that you will copy and recreate on your own. You'll notice that on this uh, first page, it is the table of contents where we do have a table of your five EDT courses, EDT 6005, 6010, 20, 35, and 45, with a description of each course. On the right-hand side, you'll also notice this sidebar. This sidebar acts as a navigation pane where you can click between um, the different courses. When you go into um, a course, whether using the table of contents or the sidebar, each course page is going to look similarly where you'll have the course title, a description, the standards that the course fulfills, and then there will be specific portfolio assignments um, that we have designated where you will put placeholders in a chart for those and then later on after you complete those assignments you will go back into the page and link your actual assignment to that. So if somebody were viewing your portfolio and wanted to see your collaborative instruction unit, they would then be able to click on the link and see your actual product that you have created as a result of taking the course. And then also at the end of each course, there is um, a reflection that we call DARS, um, where you will describe some of the assignments that you completed in the course, um, or sometimes we call them artifact and the impact it had on your professional development. You will analyze. So talking about the personal decision making and inter interpretation that you had to do, how they relate back to the standard and then reflecting your honest thoughts and opinions um, about and reactions to uh, the course itself and the, um, the assignment that you have completed. There's also at the bottom of each course page, there's a link to click back to the table of content. So that is kind of a general overview of the portfolio. Later on, we'll talk about how um, there is a place where you'll put the link to this portfolio uh, for evaluation. However, um, the next step to this tutorial is to show you how to actually um, set up your portfolio. So the next thing you're going to do is you want to leave that example page up, but then you will go to pbworks.com and we will say get started. Just making sure it's .com, not, <laughs> not .org. Okay, so I'm going to go here to get started. And we are going to um, start for free, and we are in the education side of things. So we'll click Ed Hub. And we want the free version, which is going to give us one workspace. Okay, next up, you're going to choose your address. So it could be your name. It could be anything that... Um, you want it to be that isn't already taken. So for me, I'm going to try Sarah.QJ2. Um, looks like I can only not have any dots. Okay. Okay. So that is available. Um, we agree that this is for non-commercial use. We're going to click and type in my name. Now, when it comes to your email address, um, I do not recommend using your my.wilmu account just because after you graduate, um, you may periodically get an update from PV Works saying to keep your portfolio active. And if you're no longer checking that Wilmu account, 
um, you may miss out on that. So that is something that we have seen come up. So I do recommend that you use a personal email address that you will have after graduation. And then you will choose a password. And click next. Hopefully those were committed. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is um, check my email for a verification email. I was hoping I could pause the video so you didn't have to wait for me to do this part, but I guess not. Okay. So I did receive an email from PB Works. And I'm going to go ahead and click the link to verify. Now here it's saying the security settings, who can view the workspace. Um, we do want to leave this as anyone because... Um, you know, we do need for um, accountability and accreditation. Um, these portfolios may be viewed from time to time um, by people at the university. So we do need that to be anyone and click agree and take me to my workspace. Okay, so now we are in and I can see because I'm logged in now. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and reproduce the table of contents. So there are different tabs here. I'm on the front page tab. And if you notice, there's a second tab that says edit because I am the owner of this workspace. I'm going to go ahead and click edit and I'm going to change front page to say table of contents and rename that. Okay, so now it's clicked uh, name table of contents, and I'm going to click edit. Now there are there is a manual here that can help you if you wanted to learn how to do something specific. I'm going to go ahead and delete that information when I'm done looking at it, and I'm going to go back to my example. I have too many tabs going here. All right, here we go, and we're going to um, copy and paste. So it says that. You know, we don't want the stuff up top, but everything from the picture down. And we don't want to include the um, other tutorials, but we can just do these. this first chart here. I'm going to go back over to my space and paste. And the logo is not coming up, but that's okay. We'll just delete that. Okay. So now we have our table of contents. Um, later on, you can go back and add in a picture of Wilmington University. No big deal. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Now, this is super important. Um, these are currently, these linked course titles are currently linked to the example pages. We have to make our own. We don't want these links to go back to the template. So we're going to go ahead and remove these links. And we will relink them to our own pages in a moment. Okay, so I have my chart. I'm going to go ahead and save. Definitely save your work from time to time. Might take a second. Or more than a second. There we go. Okay. Now, the next thing, it's probably easiest to go ahead and create the five course pages at this point. So I'm going to go over here to um, pages and files, which is another tab. We want to keep sidebar. We'll use that in a little bit. Table contents is the page that we had just done. Um, and then there's some extra pages in here that are just kind of come with the account. You don't really need those. You can delete those if you want. Um, but we're going to come over here to new and we're going to click create a page. And this page is going to be EDT 6005. Create page. And then we'll just go ahead and do all of them at once. EDT 6010. 20. C35, C35, 
and 6045. Okay, so now we have all of our pages. We are going to need the links to those, and we also have some stuff we need to um, copy and paste onto those. So I'm going to right click and just open those in a new tab, just opening them in order. That way I have them. Okay, so I have all of my pages open there. I don't need my email anymore. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on to my 6005 page. Notice that it's already titled um, because that was the title of the page. Now I'm going to come over here to the template and go to 6005. And just like we did with the table of contents, I'm going to go ahead and copy all of this. Now if I click include this, I need to make sure I um, you know, take that link out, but we'll do that in a moment. All right, so I'm going to copy and paste. So I come back to mine, click edit and paste. I have my 605 title. I've got the course description, the standard, my chart with the um, assignment, a spot for my DAR. And then I am going to remove that link because I need to replace it with my own link. Um, and I can actually do that right now since I'm already started. So if, instead of returning to front page, you can also call a table of content. Um, I want to go ahead and insert a link there. And to do that, I can highlight what it is that I want linked. And then this nifty little sidebar here um, has the pages that I've already created. And I'm just going to click on table contents. So that has automatically created a link from this phrasing, I guess you can say, and it's going to go back to my table contents. So I'm going to click save and we can actually try that out because if I click on it, it should return to my table contents, not the template. I'm also noticing now that I'm back on this, um, table contents that I did not fill in my own name. So that's something I can do as well. So I can click edit on my table content. I can put my name. Um, while I'm in here, I can also, now that I have all my pages, I can link the course pages as well. So I can highlight and then just click the page I want to link. Highlight and do 6010. Make sure you're doing the right Courses, 6020, 6035, and 6045. Make sure I save my page. Okay, so now I have my table of contents, and when I click, it should go right to 6035. I have my setup that'll come later on in the semester. Click return to front page, 6010. All right, I'm ready to do 6010. So I'm going to go ahead and click edit. I'm going to go to, um, on 6010, I need to go back to the template. Again, I can use the sidebar to do 6010. And I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste. Paste. Now this has um, some blue in there, but those do not appear to be links. So I don't need to worry about those, but I do need to take this link out because we want to go to my homepage, not the template homepage. So I'm going to click and say, I want to go to my table of contents and click save. I'm going to test it out. Cool. Good to go. All right. So I can move on to 6020 edit. So again, if you're trying to click in this white box and it's not doing anything, you probably just forgot to hit this edit tab. That happens a lot um, in the beginning. Uh, which one am I on now? I'm on 6020. And so we're going to go ahead and do that. There we go. Now, if I had wanted to insert my own table, you can insert, use this to do tables and things um, if you wanted to, but the tables are already created for us, so you shouldn't have to, but later on, if you need to make a table, um, you know, you do have the ability to create new stuff as well. 
Okay, so I changed out the link to the table of contents. Gonna try it. Yep, brings me back to mine. On to 6035. So once you get to this part, it's very redundant. Um, you'll get the hang of it. And we tried to make this as easy as possible by giving you this template. Um, and again, we already have the portfolio pieces listed there for you. So later on, all you'll have to do is link them. Okay, table of contents, save, try it out. And 6045, we're almost there. I'm noticing the 6045 page does not have a spot for DAR. Um, I think that is because it's part of the assignment later on. So just leave that out for now. Um, that is not a mistake. It's part of the actual assignment later on. That is That course is a little bit different because you actually work in another PB workspace. And this, again, this is a, a link to a, a additional template. Don't want to get into it now, but you can leave that one there. So that way later on, um, when you go to take that course, you'll need it, but then eventually you'll replace that link. Um, but checking my table contents page. Okay. It all looks good. Um, all right. So if at some point you do want to add pictures and I'll do this by Will Mew, um, So I can go to university logo. All right. So let's say I want to use a picture. If you um, at some point are trying to add pictures to your PB works. Okay. So here I'm on my table content. Um, click edit the the PB Works toolbar is mostly normal, like any other rich text box that you may have come in contact with, whether it's email, school G, Canvas, whatever. Um, you know, there is an insert button and you can, you know, put videos and table contents, tables, things like that. Pictures in PB Works is a little bit different. You actually need to go over here to the sidebar and upload the picture first before putting it into the workspace. So um, normally you would think under the insert, there should be an option to add a picture. PB Works is a little bit funky on that. On the right hand side, if you click on image and files, so we've been looking at the pages, but there's actually another tab here that says image and files. And this is where you can upload a file that's where you can put your um, picture first and then um, click where you want it to go. And then you click your picture and it'll insert it. Again, that's really the only funky part about um, PB Works. Everything else is pretty standard. Um, if I wanted to link this, then I could highlight it, add a link or, you know, make it go back, you know, do the same thing where I can link it to a page. Uh, apparently not. <laughs> And luckily we have an undo button. Okay. So I'm going to put my picture back in there. All right, there we go. Leave that. If you want to link a picture, just do that highlight and add link and you'll be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and click save. All right. And so this is my ePortfolio. It is now um, ready to go again later on when you are getting towards the end of your courses, you'll come into the actual course page, edit the course page, you will highlight the assignment name, add a link, and add a link to your, you know, www, whatever it may be. Um, and you'll enter the, the link here, and it'll link it. All right. Um, and then, again, later on, there's something called Task Stream, where you'll put this portfolio to be evaluated, the link to the portfolio. Okay. So uh, at this point, you probably need to submit your portfolio link. So you can either do the 6005 page or the, um, the table of contents page and just grab your link, which should have the URL that you created and that you'll take this link and put it 
in Canvas, Tastream, or wherever else it needs to go. Um, the next, make sure you watch part two of the uh, tutorials because the next tutorial is going to show you how to set up that sidebar, which is that navigation plane. Um, we just want to try to keep this short and sweet. So we've finished one part, but don't forget to come back and do that sidebar. So please watch tutorial number two.